The next option which is used to control the local curve mesh size is spacing. The node distribution on the curve can be specified by different initial spacing and ratio. For the start end it is uh, usually referred to as 1 and for the end of that curve it is referred to as 2. So we have spacing 1 and ratio 1. These are two different parameters at the start of the curve and we have spacing 2 and ratio 2. These are two different parameters at the end of the curve. The spacing is the initial space, initial size or initial length between the starting and ending nodes. The ratio it specifies the growth rate which means uh, this particular start size how it grows along the curve. Again for both uh, for ratio also we have ratio 2 and ratio 1 uh, which means uh, ratio 2 for ending and ratio 1 for starting of the curve. Maximum space defines the maximum element spacing of that of the curve. Curve direction is this particular direction that is displayed. It is given by arrow which helps us to uh, see which one is the starting uh, node and which one is the ending node of the curve. Now we will discuss the dynamic method panel in detail. The option dynamic allows user to change the curve parameters interactively. The input parameters that are available in this particular uh, option are similar to those uh, within the general tab. The only change uh, or the only difference is that these options can be changed interactively. These parameters can be changed interactively. Each option has an increase and decrease button on the right side as we can see here. This is used to change the parameters using mouse buttons. Now the functioning of the mouse button is like the left mouse button increases the value by specified quantity while the right mouse button decreases the value by specified quantity and the middle mouse click applies these changes. When we use dynamic the procedure is to first select the parameters that is to be changed. Then we click on the, these right increase or decrease button to increase these values. Then we drag the cursor on the curve whose parameters are to be changed. The, the curve will change the color to gray. Then we use the mouse button to change these values. At the end we press the middle mouse button to apply these changes. So the parameters that we can change dynamically are maximum size, number of nodes, bunching ratios, height, height ratio, width, maximum size limit, maximum deviation. All these parameters which are similar to the general tab also. Only the difference is these can be changed interactively. Last uh, method is the copy method in which we copy the parameters of a curve to another curve. We select the source curve here and then we select the curve to which we have to copy or apply these changes in the destination curve. All these parameters as you can see are inactive that is we cannot manually change them. That is because these parameters are taken from the source curve and they are just applied to the curve that we are going to copy. It is useful to avoid the repetitive task of giving parameters to curves which are similar and we just want the mesh on those curves to be repeated as it is from the source curve. So what we do is just select the source curve, all these parameters will pop up or populate and then we select the destination curve and apply. There are two methods that is relative and absolute. Within absolute these values are applied as it is from the original curve. If we select relative they are scaled by the scaling factor. After seeing all these parameters and inputs that we have to specify to set up the mesh, the last panel or the last tool is the compute surface mesh option. What it does it is that it creates the final surface mesh based on our parameters. There are two options. First option is override surface preset default. What it does is that uh, we can change the mesh type and mesh method in before computing the final mesh. It will override the global mesh setup. The next input is select geometry. What this input does is uh, gives us a choice to select different geometry elements uh, in order to generate the final mesh. It is not necessary to generate the final mesh for the entire geometry. We can also select individual components and parts and individual regions th and then create the final uh, surface mesh. We can select all that is the entire geometry will be selected for meshing, surface meshing. We can select visible that is only the visible elements on the screen will be selected for surface meshing or to compute the final mesh. We can also select parts, individual parts and we can individually select from the screen by clicking the part that we want. So once we say apply on this particular surface compute surface mesh panel or tool the final surface mesh is created and it is saved in a .uns file which will be written after computing mesh. So this is all about uh, surface meshing or shell meshing in ICM CFD. Thank you for viewing this particular lecture which was based on shell meshing. I hope you are now very well familiar with shell meshing within ANSYS ICM CFD. You can try some of the tutorials on surface meshing which involves surface meshing and get yourself more accustomed with uh, shell meshing. 
Okay, so we end our lecture on shell meshing here. This was part of the detailed uh, lecture series on ANSYS ICM CFD. We hope to see you in the next lecture, which will again be related to ANSYS ICM CFD. So thank you for viewing this lecture. See you in the next lecture.